Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another uh, repair video. This time this is a uh, viewer submitted um, article. Uh, so my buddy Travis um, posted in one of my repair videos asking, he had a Game Boy Micro with a busted LCD and he asked me, can I repair this for him? And I said, yeah, sure. Send it in and uh, we'll get this sorted out. Should be a pretty easy fix. This is my Game Boy Micro. And I'll be uh, taking the battery from this to test. Uh, post office generally does not look very kindly on sending lithium batteries through the mail. So, but yeah, you can see this turns on. My battery is still charged. Works perfectly. This will be kind of my comparison test unit. So let's just get this open. And see what's going on with the LCD. this aside okay so we have a bag in a bag I always love me some bagception yep so he had said he'd sent it in the case uh, which is very good because um, when you put these things through the mail you, you want to make sure they don't get more damaged and let's see so his uh, oh I can see it already you can see the discoloration from um, the crack there are two cracks it looks like and the liquid crystals already seeping out so, um, let me get set up, let me grab the screwdrivers and whatnot, and I'll meet you in a sec. Okay, so for the repair video, a uh, pair of tweezers will help. Uh, having a tri-wing screwdriver is a must, as well as a small, like, jeweler's size uh, Phillips. So this guy is the replacement LCD, as the backlight ribbon cable, and then this is the data. You want to be very careful with the ribbon. Uh, any bending, you could, if you you know overly bend it, whatnot, could actually break that before you even get to install it. So I'm just going to keep this safely tucked in here while I take this guy apart. Another good idea is to put down something uh, so that nothing can get scratched, some kind of uh, microfiber or something like that. So let me grab that. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, so just going to use a mouse pad and then very soft sort of rubber I don't I don't know what this is actually I don't know where I got it but it is a very soft rubber and we'll just leave the case there so first up let's take off the uh, screen protector uh, the lens now there is a special tool to do this but if you're very careful you can use tweezers uh, to get in there all it takes is a very light press don't push too hard I've done this many a times. I don't have the official tool, and I know I could 3D print one, but eh, I, I, I pretty much never remove my uh, screen lens. So yeah, uh, we'll set this aside so it does not get damaged. And wow, <laughs> yeah, just for fun, let's uh, let's get the battery out of mine and see how it looks lit up. Uh, he had told me that it does turn on. You can hear all the sounds, but you know there's a very obvious problem of it. Um, you know, being cracked and whatnot. So, just gonna open the battery compartment. Just a single uh, Phillips, tiny Phillips. And we're just gonna set my battery in there. Make sure you get the right way around, insert it, just as a temporary test. Oh man. Yeah, you can definitely see that. That is very clear signs of breakage. Uh, interesting, you can see some of the vertical data still lit up. Uh, but yeah, this guy is well and truly toast. So, switch that off. We could hear the audio. Everything is working but that. So, let's just do a quick teardown. So, uh, two tri-wings there. Another two. And that'll get us started. So, let's take our tri-wing driver. And if this has never been opened before, um, it might take a little bit of force, but be, be very careful. All the screws are so small that it's so easy to strip them. So we just want to take our time. Last thing you want to do is strip the screw, and then you know the next guy who has to repair anything or open it up to clean uh, won't be able to do so. So all these four screws are the same size, so I just set them aside. Um, a lot of the other screws that we'll be seeing later are different sizes, so you might want to start keeping track of uh, what goes where. Now we have the top screw and the side screws all done, and we should be able to lever the back off now. 
Ah, almost forgot. So we have um, a couple more screws here. I believe it's just this tri-wing, tri the bottom larger one that needs to be removed. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, this guy, so just keep track that that goes there. And there's another one up in the corner here. It's been a couple years since I've opened up my Game Boy Micros. Haven't really had to uh, since repairing them. Um, a common issue are the shoulder triggers, uh, which is rather unfortunate because it's not really a standard part that you can easily replace. <laughs> but let's see. Yeah, just give it a little wiggle and it'll come right off. This guy's a little dusty, so I'll probably end up just giving this a quick clean over uh, once I'm done actually repairing it. So, next we have the retaining bracket. There's two Phillips screws here. And I don't remember if these are different sizes or not. But let's see. Yep, they're the same size. So, two, one in here, one in there. And we should be able to wiggle out mid-assembly bracket. And one little thing is, if you have a pair of tweezers, there's a clip here. Um, the... the kind of the front part clips onto, um, you might need to slightly pry. And sometimes wiggling helps as well. Yeah, it helps if you have something a little bit pointy. Uh, I use the blunt end of my pocket knife because if I slip, it's not going to scratch anything. And you just kind of want to get in there and lift. Now watch out, uh, the shoulder buttons, once you lift this bracket out, the shoulder buttons are all going to try to spring out everywhere. Oh yeah, forgot. One more screw down here. Luckily it appears that all the screws within like a given level are the same, uh, so it makes things quite a bit easier. And damn it, that re-engaged. So yeah, just set aside the shoulder buttons uh, when you can. Uh, and there's a little spring that's captive in them. Make sure this doesn't ping off and you lose it. And good luck finding that on the ground. Also, the power switch will fall out. And eventually, at some point, once you get the front faceplate, this power switch will fall off as well. Okay, so now the mid-frame assembly is out. Um, gonna have to clean that as well. That is pretty dusty. Um, so yeah, uh, once we get down to this point, uh, I believe... yeah. You can take off the entire front assembly. Watch out, these two little silver start and select buttons are going to want to fall out. Uh, so I usually just kind of uh, lever them out. They lever towards that direction. So kind of give them a slight wiggle, set them aside. And the power switch, like I said, fell out as well. So uh, to get to this point, wasn't that many screws, and we can finally have access to the LCD. So just flip it up. Pull it out, and then there are some uh, flat flex uh, connectors. That, um, so to get these off, be especially careful with the uh, the one here for the actual uh, backlight. That one, you can easily break the tab, and once you break the tab, there isn't really an easy fix other than resoldering a new one or trying to like manually permanently solder it in. I've accidentally broke these types of tabs on PSP backlights, and it is a pain to fix. So basically, just get your fingernail, or um, you can use kind of like a, a plastic credit card or something. Very lightly, lever them up. Doesn't take much force. Uh, if, if it's sticking, you're probably not doing it right. So uh, basically, just wiggle it out, and you have the LCD free as well. So yeah, we can see this one's pretty well and truly toast. Uh, so the old one went in like this. So I'm going to have to do the same as well. It uh, looks like there is a bit of foam. Uh, let me see if I can get that off and apply that. Ta-da! Back on. And we're ready to go. Here, data first because that's easy. Flip that down. Now tweezers. This is a very small uh, connector. Don't force anything. Once everything is in, then we're going to have to carefully bend this so it actually fits inside. And the pressure of the front is going to hold that in, so once we actually close it up, it'll be fine. 
So, uh, start and select buttons. Where are you? Here you are. Get those in. Grab the front, which went here. Now, before you put on the front, you are going to want to grab that power switch. And the bump goes on the top. Make sure it actually aligns with the plastic part of the switch inside. Okay, so we are going to start at the top. Or we are going to start at the bottom. <laughs> Okay, there we are. Got a little bit of dust on that uh, LCD, but we'll uh, check it right after we actually screw this down. So let me grab my uh, Phillips retaining bracket. Get that settled, but don't push it in. And get the springs and the shoulder buttons sort of situated. Now before we push it down, make sure you get the volume knob in there. I believe it goes in like this. Yeah, there's a little tab on the top there. You can see it has to go through the hole in this bracket. So this is all just sort of juggling, trying to get four things to fit in at once, which is fun. So we're gonna put the screws in that'll hold this together so that we can run a quick test. Make sure that the LCD works before we screw in everything else. Let's give it a quick power test. And there we go, works. So now it's just a matter of reassembly. Okay, we're good to go. Let's uh, put the faceplate back on before any more dust finds its way back in. <sighs> Make sure there's no dust on the faceplate. <sighs> and there we go. So we're good as new. So I'm just going to grab my battery once again. Let me grab a game also just to make sure everything sort of works. I'll just close this up temporarily. One thing to be very careful about with like all the screws in this, it's it'd be so easy to strip these out. So uh, just don't tighten everything totally. <laughs> Only just enough to hold it together. They really, 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 Nintendo like really crammed in too much stuff into these guys, which is kind of almost ridiculous. So good enough for a temporary test. Let me grab a game. So I've been replaying Harmony of Dissonance, so recently, you know, just for fun. So I thought, why not use this to test? So let's see if the volume works. Let's see if brightness, I believe it's left. Yes, it is. Okay, volume, volume works fine, and let's just load this guy up. Make sure all the buttons work. Okay, we're good to go. Everything works, so there you go. That is how to replace the LCD on one of these uh, Game Boy Micros. We're all set. So this is a fairly easy repair, but the most difficult things are these tiny ass screws. I mean, really, it's kind of ridiculous. I understand why it's this way, because just everything's so freaking tiny. It's ridiculous. Um, but using, you know, proprietary... Um, tri-wing screws and whatnot um, really doesn't help if they just use Phillips. I mean, who cares if someone opens up something like this? But anyway, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you had any comments, um, you know, put them down below. If you have similar issues, this is pretty simple to fix. I mean, the only thing you really require 
small Phelps, small tri-wing, and uh, just, you know, some gumption. Uh, so anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the quick video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.